view this. Yeah, you can view this in at your own time. Yeah. So when you say when you talk about analytical chemistry, when you talk about analytical chemistry, probably uh you are thinking about matters. You are thinking about labs. Okay. So now, uh, if you are thinking about labs, you are thinking about a bench top, uh, instruments. Okay. So. Now, instead of just uh, a big, okay, bench top instruments, we are now in analytical chemistry uh, research as well as uh, labs, even labs are moving to a smaller device. A simpler technique, but it is, uh, means that it is highly qualified uh, to analyze, okay? So analytical chemistry is about analyzing. It's very important for you to understand. Analytical chemistry is about analyzing, measuring. So that will be the one that you are, you will be doing in this course. I mean, the whole analytical chemistry course. You will be learning methods to analyze, to measure, and the machines are getting smaller from this bench top to a portable one, smaller one, okay? And you can see that they are moving, not just to be smaller, but they are moving also towards wearable, okay? You, they are moving towards wearable. You can wear the machines. <laughs> you can wear it in your clothes, where your clothes can do the analysis. Okay, so that is analytical chemistry and that's where it is moving. Okay, so for us, for you, uh, when you start developing uh, techniques or methods, you have to think about all these uh, new uh, advancements, okay, new technology, new research coming into analytical chemistry. So it's not in, just enough that you learn about all techniques, okay? You need to know about the advanced techniques. Okay, uh, I'm, gonna go ask, I'm going to ask you because this is recent, okay? Since you are here, nobody is driving. Anyone know who, uh, what innovation that wins the Nobel Prize in chemistry? The recent one. Anyone know? The recent one, uh, they just uh, awarded the Nobel Chemistry, uh, the Nobel Prize Chemistry to what innovation? Anyone know? <laughs> no, <that's> okay. Right. <laughs> okay, they awarded to quantum dots, yeah, quantum dots. So it's very uh, simple material that we do uh, in, in lab. Okay, uh, probably you will do uh, this kind of materials in your uh, CHM 5003, I think, the, on Saturday. So this, for those who are uh, registered. Okay, so this kind of material looks simple, but the first one who found it received the Nobel Prize in chemistry. And there's a lot of application. Okay, so how do they come out? with this is true by analyzing okay all those materials using the the analytical methods okay so same let's say sajita you're working in your lab i'm sure that you do quality control so those are analytical chemistry i'm sure that that's the one i just want to recap i know that you know but just to recap what is analytical chemistry, so we get our thinking aligned, <laughs> so we know what we want to achieve from this subject, okay? All right, now you see that this, this lady is wearing a mask, okay? And um, what do you think all this? <laughs> what do you think uh, is happening on the mask? Farah, because Farah is my mentee before. <laughs> That's why I call her. Farah? 
So what do you think is happening on the Mars? Yeah, Farah? Uh, since the virus or something? Yes, okay. So, yeah. So instead of using PCR machine, we know that the virus is, uh, most of the time, they do RT-PCR. I hope that no people know what is PCR machine means that they do uh, molecular analysis in the in the lab, detect the DNA of the virus, or the simplest one that you uh, have done before, which is the RTK rapid test kit at your home. And then you check whether you have two lines or one line, okay? So you can see that those is happening here. So this is analytical chemistry. So this is also analytical chemistry. You don't think about a big gadget so it's all the time. Okay, even the smallest gadget, even your rapid test kit is also analytical chemistry. Okay, so I hope that you broaden your mind. <laughs> it's not just about methods, but even the simplest method can be considered analytical chemistry because analytical chemistry can be quantitative as well as qualitative. So this one, the yes or no, yeah, because you're using the rapid test kit, Yes or no, you, yes, you have COVID or no, you don't have COVID. You don't know how bad the infection is, you don't know. Because it's not quantitative, it's qualitative. So analytical chemistry is also about qualitative. It's not just quantitative, okay? So these are, are happening right now in the world. People are moving towards development of smaller and smaller uh gadgets or devices okay so that's what i'm doing in glasgow <laughs> to learn about these things yeah all right um so this this also a machine in detecting uh the virus so instead of uh you know taking samples from from the what <laughs> from your mouth uh, also from your nose we can just like breathe to the device and then the virus can be detected. So this is what we call as electronic nose. And they name it spironose is, is the commercial name. So this is analytical chemistry. We are talking about analytical chemistry. How does this being developed from scratch? Do you think that it just out of <laughs> thin air? No, it's not from thin air, okay? This is where it starts, analytical chemistry. Okay, this is the field of analytical chemistry. Where do you start? Okay, this is interesting for me, but that was many years ago. This guy named Joseph Wang, Joseph Wang. <laughs> and this is me. So uh, Professor Joseph Wang uh, developed this underwear. Sorry to show you an underwear, but it's very interesting underwear. And it's a smart underwear because it is embedded with a analysis system, okay? And this underwear can analyze, okay? The soldiers, because this is designed for the soldiers, for the army, uh, the, uh, analyze sweat, blood, okay? So that helps can be given in a faster way. So instead of somebody need to call, okay, there's someone is sick here, but the underwear can just connect <laughs> to the headquarters, telling that somebody is in distress, okay? And this guy needs help because he's in the war, okay? He's in the war. Uh, nobody have time to call or uh, get, where's, where's, my, where's my communication set? No. This is how they communicate. But well, I don't know what happened to this underwear, whether it is a successful story or not. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But this is the future. This is the future. You can actually uh I, I know that you somebody some of you might have like smartwatch. Okay. Yeah, so it's your smartwatch monitors your heartbeat. Some some might be can be do can do uh blood pressure analysis. Uh, I don't know, someone can uh, claim that they can do glucose analysis. I don't know whether it's working well or 
acceptable or not. I don't know because I do not have a smartwatch. Uh, then these are things that start from analytical chemistry. Okay, how they develop a new method or a new device. So please don't limit yourself into a big instrument in the lab, but analytical chemistry is method development, okay, data evaluation, and then in the end, you come up with a, a, a established method or established device, okay? So this is how important analytical chemistry is. So imagine if you can have this, then you don't, uh, I mean, if you're sick somewhere, then helps can be uh, given in a faster way, all right? So, um, yeah, this is what we have done before, the rapid test kit. So I think many of us know who this actor is, <laughs> especially ladies, okay? And of course, analytical chemistry is about our environment as well, because we need to be in a good environment. We want clean water, we want clean air, we want to live healthily. So in order to do that, we always yeah, need to analyze our water, we need to analyze our air, and we need to know the content. How toxic now? Do we have issues with heavy metals in our drinking water? Or do we have issues with our air? Now, Malaysian, uh, Malaysia is having a haze issue. I don't know, because I'm not in Malaysia now. <laughs> so I don't know. You, you know better. So we want to live uh, healthy. So we need to be concerned about the quality of air, water, okay? And to know the quality of air and water, we have to analyze the sample, which goes back to the analytical chemistry, okay? And these are data. That's why we are learning data handling today, okay? Hopefully, right. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Just stop this one. Okay. So this one, uh, I just want to share you what our group have developed just to, I mean, share with you, okay, that we are also moving to electronic nose. So this is my team in UPM, as well as we are working with our team in University Malaysia Police, okay? <clears throat> we combine our expertise because I'm not from engineering. Uh, I am chemistry. So my part is more on the chemistry part, but the device part has to be someone from engineering. So that, that's how we work across the board. We need somebody from engineering. We need somebody from uh, fundamental chemistry, and we need also somebody from molecular. And then we can come up to, with a very good analytical techniques or device. Okay. All right, uh, this is also my work on tuberculosis. So this is analytical chemistry. Uh, this is a quantitative uh, device uh, to check whether you have tuberculosis. That's why it is TB. <laughs> it's tuberculosis. Okay, TB, I don't know whether you know what is uh, tuberculosis, but it's a disease, it's a lung disease. And I have shared with you uh, the book. Okay, but this picture is sixth edition. The one that I have shared with you is the late, not to say the latest, sorry, it's, it's not the latest edition, but it's quite recent. So no issue. If you, because the edition, usually they, they edit the pictures, they add some more examples, but the fundamentals, uh, important text is, is there. Okay, so you're lucky. <laughs> you have the PDF version. So uh, I, I was lucky to get access. If not, then you have to buy, which is quite expensive. Uh, <clears throat> and for those of you who are working in the lab, like uh, Farah, Atika, SD, <clears throat> this is very important book. I hope that you still keep it from your undergraduate study because you can always refer back. Okay, whenever this is not exam yeah? this is not examination time if you have doubt if you need to know 
back, then please open the book. Okay, this is very good book for analytical chemistry. And the data handling and the data analysis that we're going to discuss is based on this book. Okay, all right. I hope that you keep the PDF, okay, so that we can discuss later. <clears throat> okay, now we have another 15 minutes. So I would like to, uh, to ask you a question, yeah? <clears throat> okay, probably I can ask... <laughs> um, okay. okay, I I love to ask questions, so you, <laughs> you have to bear with me. Uh, SD, okay, is D, yeah, no, sorry, SD, is D, okay. Uh, what will be your question if I tell you? Okay, let's see. Uh, I, I'm talking to you, is D. Uh, I see that there's a new virus X. Okay, I, I, I think people know about the virus X, okay? There's a new virus X and I tell SD, okay, that this virus is 90% uh, fatal, means that it can cause 90% fatal if you infect it. So what would be your question to me, SD? SD? What would be your question to me if I just mentioned to you? Is D? Are you there? <laughs> okay, what, 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 yeah, what will be the question you ask me if I say that, if I give you that statement? Yeah. Um, my question would be um, what, what uh, is, uh, is the um, uh, what is the evidence, right? Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> invention, mm -hmm. invention of invention of product mm -hmm. to um to prevent the virus uh from spreading <laughs> sp spread spread around the world. <laughs> ah, okay, is the, well, of course, of course, that will be the one that we first ask. Okay, what do we need to do? <laughs> All right, Ahmed. What what is your question to me? If I I talk about, uh, I mean, I talk to you and I'm giving that statement. What what will be your question, Ahmed? Uh, excuse hmm. me, teacher. May I repeat the question? Uh, sorry, uh, professor. Not sure. Uh, <laughs> can you repeat the question? Okay, okay. Let's see. I'm talking. Uh, uh, it's not a to... question. Uh, I'm talking to you, Ahmed, let's say, Ahmed, yeah. uh, there is a virus X coming. And I say yeah. that, that this virus X is 90% little, means that it's going to cause, if you're infected, 90%, you're going to die. So what will be your question to me? Your question to me. Okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah. My question will be... Uh, hmm. uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, uh, You're not worried? <laughs> no, not that I'm not worried, but I'm not sure about uh, the first question because there are uh, many questions to ask about uh, that. Okay. As a scientist, you know, um, we as a scientist, okay, we have to ask for evidence because, I mean, we are scientists, right? We are, we learn science, okay? So if yeah. somebody claims like, uh, virus X is coming and it's going to be like 90% little. Uh, okay, and you're going to die. Like it's 90%. <laughs> okay, it's just 10% the possibility that you, you're going to leave. So, uh, the first and foremost, what is your evidence? Where's your data? Where's your data? Right? You need to know where's your data? Where's, where's your study? How do you claim that? Okay, so this is what we're going to learn. <laughs> When I do that claim, let's say, of course, it should be based on a, a data that has been done in the lab. I mean, there, there are a lot of data being acquired uh, to study the virus. And then, of course, probably they do some simulation and they come out that, oh, it's going to be like 90% much more uh, little compared to the 
uh, previous virus. I'm, I'm, I don't want to scare you, but this is like something when it matters, life and death. And then we just, you know, finish. <laughs> Not to say finish, but we have gone through the pandemic, then we know how serious it is, right? So we need to be prepared if this happens. So, uh, but before we need to be prepared, we need to know the data. Is it true? Okay. Or is it just, you know, you know rumors? Okay. Somebody writes in the Facebook or in the social media that virus X is coming, is 90%, you know, and then uh, is it true? <laughs> But we don't want to get caught, just like the previous virus, uh, the COVID-19, uh, because we sort of, you know, not ready for that. But we need to study the data. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you, uh, which I'm showing you right now, <laughs> okay. This is FBI laboratory. This is a real case, yeah? Uh, but it happens in 1995, okay? So, as you know, this is U.S. Uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation, and they have accused these uh, bombers, uh, a high-profile case, Alfred, okay? And the FBI lab had performed analysis for explosive um, from the bomb site and provided key evidence, okay? And the jury found, uh, t the jury found Timothy... Uh, the bombing, why is it Alfred activity? But I don't know. Uh, on all counts of conspiracy, bombing, and first degree murder. Mm -hmm. But, okay, there's a but there. You can see that this guy, uh, Timothy, legal defense team, means that the one that defends that him, uh, they found some contradic contradictory weaknesses in the pers persecution case which is the report by the FBI, okay? So you imagine if you don't do, okay, data analysis, data recording in a careful manner, in an organized manner, in an acceptable manner, okay, what happened next is, okay, you can imagine that all these cases, bombing and whatsoever, only three pages of evidence submitted, means that only three pages of data submitted to the uh, as evidence. So do you think that is acceptable for this high profile and guilty first degree case? No, it's not acceptable. So um, the whistleblowers allegations means that the one that report this uh, Timothy <clears throat> uh, were not substantiated, were not substantiated, that means that it's not um, proper is so there is insufficient documentation of test results improper preparation of lab reports and inadequate of record, record management okay and record retention system so the case is gone actually even though people know that this guy is guilty but due to the uh, improper improper of data uh, Management, data handling, preparation of lab reports means that the reports of the data. So this one, the, the case is gone. So you can imagine that, okay, people can challenge your data. People can challenge the evidence. Even though you have done all the analysis in the lab, you obtain data, you are very confident about the data, but people can say your data is not good because you haven't done a good report and you haven't handled, you have not handled the data properly. So this is what we are going to do. <laughs> For my part is to do the data treatment and data reporting by using statistics and uh, also other methods, okay? So, based on this uh, case, yeah? <clears throat> okay, you can see the Justice Department concluded that the management had failed to establish and enforce validated procedures and protocols, means that the FBI lab is, is not good, <laughs> but that was many years ago. 
So for, for the FBI lab, so they insist each examiner who analyzed, okay, the word is analyzed, okay, of course, you are going to do the analysis. Evidence should prepare and sign a separate, okay, that one is data, uh, is management. All case files should contain notes, print out, means that you need to jot down yeah, all the data in proper way. The lab must develop a record retention and retrieval system. Written procedures for handling evidence and for avoiding contamination should be refined. Okay, so before we learn about data handling, okay, before we learn about data handling, you have to relate this with good lab practice. Some of you are working in the lab, so this is obviously a very important element because you might be challenged by your customer <laughs> or the one that who received the data. Okay, so it goes back to my question. If my, my statement says that we found out that a new virus uh, is uh, probably approaching, uh, a new virus X, it is 90% little, then I have to give evidence and the evidence must be solid. Must be solid in terms of what we're going to discuss after this and later uh, during the first half, okay? So I hope that you really uh, can uh, relate the good lab practice. Uh, this is the one that, that move us to data handling. Because uh, when we do good lab practice, these are the one that we are working on. First, what technique that we are using. And then, for, for example, you're using chromatography. Okay, so this is the technique. And then you narrow down, you want to use specific methods to analyze a specific drug, for example. Okay, you have specific method development. And you write based on your method development that you have uh, developed. Okay, because you know, let's say uh, chromatography, you need to know the right buffer, the right ratio of buffer, uh, the right... Uh, well, if you need to control the, the temperature, for example, so that in that way, you are writing a new procedure, okay? And then during that time, also you validate your developed procedure with standard method. And in the end, you come up with a protocol, okay? Def definitive uh, directions, okay, usually usually we use the word manual. You write the manual on how to do the analysis. So along this process, of course, you obtain data. Okay, you obtain a lot of data. Okay, so this is the purpose of this subject because you are going to analyze the data, okay, do a data treatment because sometimes the data are not good. <laughs> it's not always a good data, but you cannot just, um, you know, throw away all the data because it, it takes a lot of time to do the analysis. So how are you going to do that? And then after that, you are going to validate the data, whether the data is acceptable at standard level. And then in the end, you are going to write the report. So this is uh, the flow of process, okay, that you need to do before you get a good one. You finally can confirm you have a good protocol. Okay, I hope that makes sense before we stop. <laughs> Any questions? Make sense, everybody? <laughs> This good, really good. Thanks. Ah, okay. It makes sense to you, I hope. Yeah, this is a bef sort of introduction before we can, you know, understand why we have to do statistic, why we have to do <laughs> data treatment, why the why is goes back to the question. Let's see. I'm I'm saying there's something virus X is coming. What's your evidence? <laughs> okay, don't scare me. I need to know the evidence. <laughs> I need to work. If I, I'm, I'm scared, I will not be work, you know, working outside. <laughs> but I need to be, uh, you know, I need to understand how bad it is. And then I need to know how solid your data is. Okay, that will be a question from a scientist. Okay, so all right, we're going to stop. Okay, so you can have a break. But before we stop, these are my questions, yeah? 
uh, even the, I mean, the answers are here. So, um, <laughs> but I didn't share this latest slide to you purposely so that you at least read in somewhere else in the book. If you are reading the, um, I mean, you can just Google what is the meaning of selectivity, sensi sensitivity, accuracy, precision. This is just something for you to revise. And then we will talk uh, from, we will start back from, if it is Malaysian time, it should be eight to nine. Okay. All right. Any question before we take a break? No. All right. Good. So please do. Okay. While you are having a break, uh, please spend at least half an hour uh, studying these terms. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a good break. Yes, doctor. All right. Thank, Thank you, doctor. We, we get, we'll still use the same link. Yeah. I do not need to you know, <laughs> create a new link. All right.